we have Surty Pro Solutions, Simon Quinn. He's the sales manager over at Surty Pro. We have Andrew Neal over at ScanCo, software sales spe specialist. We have Matt St. John's, sales executive at Starship. And American Payment Solutions, Patty Benitez. She's a director of Channel Partner Sales. Thank you all presenters for joining us as well. And uh, just a little bit about the companies. Surty Pro uh, has been doing this for over 25 years. They focus on Sage, Sage 100, Sage 500, uh, and Sage X3. Uh, they are based in Los Angeles, and they have a team of certified developers, consultants, technicians, CPAs, and software programmers. They have, their core competency really is distribution, automated inventory, cycle count is their program, and they also uh, specialize in Magento for e-commerce, so um, always count on them to help you out with those uh, e-commerce situations as well. And we have ScanCo, their Sage OEM partner and leader in WMS applications for Sage 100 since 1989. They uh, focus on distribution and manufacturing solutions. And they have a dub, uh, WMS real-time application that resides on iOS, Android, and Windows devices so that those warehouse personnel and manufacturing personnel on the shop floor can help with uh, manufacturing production orders and pick, pack, and ship uh, remotely that interacts right into Sage 100 with the remote devices. And we are also joined by V Technologies. Matt St. John is going to be talking about integrated shipping with Sage 100. They've been doing this for 17 plus years with Sage 100 and uh, they've been uh, actually providing shipping solutions since 1989. They also work with many uh, applications, integration like EDI, True Commerce, High Jump, SPS Commerce, EDI providers they have integrations with to automate that shipping out of Sage 100 with the picking the right carrier. And we're joined by American Payment Solutions and they've just um, announcing their click to pay functionality for Sage 100. They're a full service merchant services provider and they serve thousands of small, medium and large organizations. And um, they have a seamless org, uh, integration with Sage 100 to get you the best rate uh, by using all the information in the Sage 100 system about the customer uh, through level three processing. And just a little bit about the workflow here. Um, we're going to be talking about Surty Pro Solutions, and that integrates with ScanCo for physical counts. And uh, it also automates um, the, it also has email a notification that uh, automates what to count each day. So inventory counts is a big part of distribution, and uh, they're going to be talking about their integration with ScanCo for automating that pick and pack process with the iOS, Windows, Android devices out there in the warehouse. And uh, ScanCo and Starship integrate. Starship automates the shipping of the packages based on all the rules of the shipment, the dimensional weight, where the customer is located, uh, selects the best carrier, best price for that shipment. All the tracking numbers are updated into Sage 100 for customer service. Email notifications automatically go out to the customer. And American Payment Solutions is going to be talking about level three credit card processing and their Sage 100 click to pay <coughs> and getting the best rate uh, credit card processing rate for that uh, sales order. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and let Simon get started with Surty Pro. Thank you so much, Simon. Thanks so much, Adrian. Appreciate the overview and the introduction there. All right, well, thanks again for everybody for joining us. Uh, my name is Simon Quinn. I am the National Sales Manager for Surty Pro Solutions. And today I'm going to cover how CertiPro's Automated Inventory Cycle Count, or AICC if you will, will allow you to automate and simplify your inventory counts. So I'm going to start with an overview of the concept, if you will, and then I'm going to jump into Sage and show you the functionality of the software. And then lastly, we'll cover some of the reporting tools that exist. So using cycle counts um, you know, to maintain high levels of accuracy is one of the best ways to identify problem areas. 
An effective, an effective cycle counting program like CERTIPRO's AICC eliminates the need for physical inventory expenses. But by performing regular cycle counts, you give yourself an opportunity to compare the quantities in SAGE to the quantities counted. And this variance is a powerful opportunity to identify where your inventory system is working well, where there's little variance, and where you may have a control issue that needs to be tightened up, so there's high variance. So if you notice that your numbers are way off, you now have an opportunity to find out why the problem is happening and take corrective action. Keep in mind, using regular cycle counts allows you to take corrective action more frequently. So for example, if you perform monthly cycle counts, you have 12 opportunities to fix the problem versus one when performing annual physical inventory counts. So CERTIPRO's AICC is going to configure all of this for you. Now, an important difference between cycle counting and taking physical inventory annually, by having your warehouse staff perform cycle counts of segments of your inventory regularly, you negate the need for shutting down your operations for a weekend or period of time just to make sure that your numbers are correct. Of course, closing down your business for any period of time is going to be costly and paying your employees overtime to perform physical inventory counts can add up as well. So this is what our inventory cycle count can help you eliminate. I'm going to go ahead and jump over to Sage and we'll launch right into actual software itself. We have, <clears throat> we've created the software under inventory management and it's under the physical count. So right here we have the CPS inventory cycle count entry. Um, and this is basically where you will launch the software. So this program is a single screen user inter interface. It's very simple to use and very easy to manage. The warehouse is identified by whatever codes you currently have, and you can scroll through these warehouse codes with these arrows. Each warehouse is gonna have its own schedule, and you can configure what time you wanna generate the cycle count per warehouse. You can also set up automatic email notifications by warehouse. So for demo purposes, I'm gonna go select a warehouse, and you can see that these grids automatically populated. And I wanna go through some of these here. So the top grid here is the filtering section. The middle grid will represent the filtering choices and shows you what you, might, what you have assigned into the cycle count interval. And down below is the summary based on your setup. It shows how many items per day you will be counting. So if I go through up top here, I'm gonna click on auto refresh, you'll see I can sort through the various items. I have all valuations, I have all product types, I have all procurement. And by checking or unchecking any one of these, you can see that the middle grid automatically populates for those specific items. I can also go ahead and take a look, I can drill down a little bit further. So for example, if I look at standard unit price, and I wanna look at uh, prices that are greater than the value of $1,000, and plug that in here. So here you'll see that those items in the middle grid have now populated uh, those items that are greater than $1,000. <clears> so once you actually filter down the, to the specific set of items that you wanna look at, now you can actually go and perform your updates. So I've already, as I said, uh, ID the items that are greater than $1,000, and I want now to assign them to an inventory cycle category and define how many times I want them to be counted. So before jumping into that and showing you how that functionality works, I wanna talk about some of the abbreviations or these acronyms up here. So first we have YCC, as you'll see up here, that stands for yearly cycle counts. Upon implementation or adding an item, you're gonna have a value of minus one, meaning that you've not yet touched those items. When you move them to zero, it means that you've added the item to be inventoried and counted. You can also have a number from one to 52, meaning that you can assign an item to be counted once a week, once a month, or whatever interval you require. And so the update's very simple. If I click on the, uh, the corner here, it's gonna highlight all of the items, and I can head down to the count frequency, and I can assign a number, and it's gonna globally assign a number to all of the items that I have selected. So for these demo purposes, I'm gonna assign 10. <clears throat> so, the, um, so, if I just, so, one, so right now I've done 10 times a year. I can also do this line item by line item or manually uh, select multiple line items and assign the value. <clears throat> the remaining count here, this is another powerful tool that allows you to set up the items that are going to be discontinued. So we know that some items are not going to be in your inventory perpetually. So this basically allows you to define how many more items you want to be counted. 
So if I place this item here for three more times for the remaining counts, it's going to count that item three more times and it's automatically going to update the YCC or the yearly cycle count to zero. So in the summary count down here, once that's all completed, uh, it's, going to, it's going to display based on my setup how many items I need to count each day so I can actually see what the number is. Coming up here for FCNT, that stands for force count next time. Um, there is force count all the time and there's also hold. So for hold, we know that in every warehouse there are scenarios where you will pull certain items temporarily to hold and you don't want those items to be included in the count until the item is released back into inventory. Um, for force count next time, if you find a discrepancy and you want that item to be resolved as soon as possible, the item question might be scheduled for a count two months from now, uh, but you don't want to wait. So by checking this box, <clears throat> uh, it's going to generate the cycle count for the next time the item you want it to be included. Force count all the time is pretty self-explanatory. If you check that box, it's going to force the count of that item every single time. Jumping up to the upper right-hand corner, we have the scheduler. Um, so for the scheduling, you have the option to schedule the cycle count automatically. And as you can see, we, we are simply using the task scheduler from Sage 100. And here you can schedule what days of the week you want to run the cycle count. Clicking on the active warehouse, this shows you all the active warehouses, whether you have one, two, or 10, and it will allow you to manage them to either have them enabled for a cycle count or not. Clicking on the options screen, this has a number of tools available here. This is where you will edit the email addresses for those individuals that will actually be receiving an email with the, uh, with the required count uh, attached to it uh, the next day. Um, and also there's some, very, uh, some other uh, options here for the generation. So for example, uh, rollover YCC count from large to small, that's a very helpful option for A, B, or C item ranking. Basically, once all of the A items have been counted, it's gonna pull items from the B category to maintain the same number of items to be counted per day. Clicking on the exception days, this allows you to uh, select a day or enter the days where the count should be skipped. And these can either be holidays or these can be vacation days. Uh, the holiday type will apply to all warehouses and the vacation type will only apply to a single warehouse. <clears throat> so you also have the option to create, while this is automated, you also have an option to do a manual generation. So I've already gone through uh, this, this process and let's go ahead and take a look at what that does. So once the cycle count has actually been uh, created, let's take a look at the spreadsheet that is delivered via email to the assigned warehouse team. So once I open this up, uh, you will see that this is an email that has, it's basically a CSV file that tells you what needs to be counted. So here you have the item code, uh, the description, the bin location. And if you're using a scanner, whether you're using Scanco or if you have multi-bin, you can quickly go and verify all of the counts and perform the update right into Sage using the scanner. So now I'm gonna go into the physical count entry program. And I'm going to bring up the warehouse that we were working with, which was 000. And clicking on the lines, here we will see the items that actually, uh, you will see the items that need to be counted today. And this is where you would actually put in the number of the quantity counted. So it basically pushes all that information through to here. So once the cycle count has been run, you obviously want to know the results. So how accurate is my inventory? And for this reason, we've created the, uh, the CPS inventory cycle count history. It's basically an explorer. And this is a place that you'll actually find the items that not only have a discrepancy, but also have the items <clears throat> that also will show the items that have been counted uh, throughout the year that have been accurate. And here you can look into how many items are being counted each day, um, whether the quantity counted, uh, what the quantity counted was and additional uh, info there. Uh, it is completely customizable. And for those users that are familiar with Explorer, you can drag and drop fields and use filters to analyze any of this data. You can also export any of this information out to Excel. So with that, I'm gonna wrap up. I know I did a, 
uh, a very high level overview of uh, the automated inventory cycle count. But if there's any specific questions, we can get into that at the end of this call. Or here's my contact information if you would like to uh, reach out to me directly to set up a one on one demo and do a deeper dive into the software itself. With that, I'll hand it over to Andrew from Scanco. Thank you. Thank you, Simon. And thank you, everybody, for joining today and for inviting Scanco. I'm going to go ahead and start our little slideshow that we have here first. So what, we're, uh, what ScanCo does, we are a uh, scanning and automation service that we integrate with Sage. So what I'm going to be showing today is uh, kind of picking off where Simon was uh, with the physical account and how we can actually implement and integrate the scanning um, to automate the process of the actual data collection on the physical count side. And then what we're also going to go ahead and dive into is our pick, pack, and ship program and how that can go ahead and seamlessly uh, be entered into Sage and how Starship can go ahead and pick that up. So a little bit about ScanCo. Um, as Adrian was saying in the very beginning, we've been around since 1989, and we've been a leading provider of supply chain automation and software services. And uh, just right around 1995 is when we reached an agreement with Sage to become the OEM developers for the barcode module. So if you're familiar with the barcode module in Sage today, we are the developers for that barcode module. And why is mobility trending in the supply chain industry today? Uh, by implementing a scanning uh, uh, service into your warehouse, you're obviously going to have increased productivity. You're going to have a lot of information at your fingertips. So no longer are you going to be walking around and wondering where your products are or what phase of the production that they are. You're going to be able to have real-time analytics because we're going to be talking in real time with your Sage server. And we're using barcodes to validate transactions. So we're eliminating errors by, you know, just uh, typing, you know, typing errors or grammatical errors, anything like that. By implementing an actual barcoded system and reading that, we're going to be validating and making sure that all of the information is going to be correct. So one thing that I wanted to go ahead and touch base with is when you go ahead, and this is an announcement for anybody that's going to be upgrading to Sage 2018, or maybe those of you who have already upgraded to Sage 2018, uh, once you go ahead and do your upgrade to the Sage 2018, you're actually going to get and buy free of the physical count licenses if you have uh, the barcode module. Uh, it has been rebranded to the Sage uh, Mobility for Barcode. But as I was stating before, once you go ahead and upgrade to Sage 2018 and you have that barcode module, um, if you want to go ahead and uh, just start off with the ScanCo product with our physical count, you can go ahead, um, absolutely go ahead and contact us, and we can go ahead and set you up with five free physical count licenses so you can go ahead and accomplish your physical counts. And what hardware typically are we going to be using? We are uh, native, a native application on iOS and Android devices. We also work with Windows Mobile. But what we're going to be actually doing today is what I'm going to be going through here is I have my Sage over here on the left, and I actually have my uh, iPod mirrored here on the right-hand side. So just as Simon was going ahead and saying, they do a great job of going ahead and learning you, organizing your cycle counts, being able to give you the real-time analytics of what to count and when to count it. Well, where ScanCo goes ahead and fits in is the actual data collection of the, that information. So just as Simon went ahead and they had that graph of what to count, we can use simple crystal reports to go ahead and barcode those sheets and then hand those out to those individuals. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and jump into our physical count icon here. And in the event that we go ahead and Serta Pro has gone ahead and notified us what items to count, what we're going to go ahead and do at this point is we're going to go ahead and count by item because our items are gone ahead and listed on that list. So now it's going to go ahead and prompt us which warehouse that we're counting in. If we have multiple warehouses that we are able to count in our Sage system, we can even use a magnifying glass to do drill downs to see all of the available warehouses that are in, that are in your Sage environment. What we would go ahead and do at this point in time, we will go up to our first item that is on the list. We will go ahead and scan that item. Once we go ahead and scan that item, just as uh, Serta Pro went ahead and notified you what bin to go to, you will go ahead and enter this information as far as what bin you are actually counting. 
So I'll go ahead and select my bin. And then what we'll go ahead and do is that individual worker will go ahead and actually start the counting process. They'll enter the quantity that they've gone ahead and counted and simply hit done. And then they're able to move to the next item. I'm gonna go ahead and do a lotted item for an example here. As you can see here, I just went ahead and put a, a, a scanned a number that wasn't an item number. We are a validation uh, company. And so by actually scanning everything, if that's not an item in Sage, it's gonna give us an error message. So let me go ahead and actually scan a real item there. And this is our lotted item. Again, there are bins that have been located on that sheet that Serta Pro has gone ahead and provided for us. And then we just wanna go ahead and collect our lot information along with the quantity that we've gone ahead and counted. We'll go ahead and say that we counted 300 for this item. Now this would continue right along until all the items on that list have been counted, at which point in time we're gonna go ahead and hit this send button. Once we go ahead and hit that send button into Sage, we, are, we can now go into our physical count entry, just as Simon was showing before. We can go into our central warehouse and into our lines tab now we can go ahead and go down. We can see the items that we've gone ahead and counted. And we can go ahead and see our lot information right here. So whereas normally there would be a manual process in between where Serta Pro goes ahead and notifies you what items to count, and then you have to go ahead and actually physically count it, wait for those pieces of paper to go in, and then you have your data entry into the system. With this, you're gonna have real-time analytics as soon as you go ahead and hit that send button. So there's a lot of quick uh, use utility as far as saving time and increasing the production of your actual physical count right there. So next, what I wanna go ahead and dive into is our pick, pack, and ship process. So one of the things that we do great here at ScanCo is we go ahead, like I say, we go ahead and automate the full process as far as uh, what you have as far as sales orders that need to go out. So what we can go ahead and do is during our picking process, we have our little picking icon right down here. So I've already gone ahead and I've gone ahead and created a sales order that we wanna go ahead and pick. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit our, our picking icon. We're gonna do a quick pick today. And now it's gonna go ahead and ask us which warehouse that we're picking in. I'll go ahead and select that we're picking in our warehouse here. And now it's gonna ask us where we're staging. So we're gonna have an individual that either has a tote or a cart, go ahead and pick up these individual items that are on this sales order. And what they're gonna do is stage it in a shipping area. Next, it's gonna go ahead and prompt us for the sales order number. Again, we can use Crystal Reports to go ahead and barcode our forms, that way it makes it easy. We can also use a magnifying glass on the top right up here to go and see all of the available sales orders that are in Sage. Or like, as I was saying before, we're gonna go ahead and scan our order here. What it's gonna go ahead and do next is prompt us with which items are we picking. If I do our lookup feature, I can go ahead and see the items that are on that actual order. Make sure we have some items on here. All right, so that is that. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and back up. We're gonna do a different order here. And we're gonna go ahead and do this 0027. Hopefully this one will go ahead and work here for us. All right, so what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna go ahead and just start with these items that we're gonna go ahead and start picking. I'm gonna go ahead and start with this item here in which it's gonna go ahead and ask us what bin that we're picking. We're, we can go ahead and see the quantities that are available for that item. So I'll go ahead and select that item. And we're gonna go ahead and pick these 40 items. I'll go ahead and hit OK. And we would, we're just going to go ahead and keep continuing this process right along. If I do my lookup feature once again, it's just it's going to omit the items that I've gone ahead and already picked. And what we'll go ahead and do is pick the next items on that list. This is a lotted item. So with lotted items, we need to go ahead and enter the lot. So I'm going to go ahead and enter our lot information right here. 
and we'll go ahead and pick these items. Um, is you're going to go ahead and pick these items, and then basically what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and dive into our shipping module. Once we go into our shipping module, we're going to go into our shipping because we're going to be sending this into sales data entry. We're going to go ahead and hit our hashtag, which with the hashtag, what that allows us to do is take the next available batch out of Sage. And just like in Sage, the next thing that we need to go is enter in the shipper ID information. Next, what we will go ahead and do is enter in the sales order that we're wanting to go ahead and ship out. At which point in time, it'll prompt us for our box level information. So what we have the availability to do here is go ahead and pack different items into different boxes. So what I'll go ahead and do here is we'll go ahead and say, we're gonna start with box one. And now we wanna go ahead and start packing up our items. Once I go ahead and select the item I wanna go ahead and pack up, what I'm able to do is go ahead and select where I'm actually taking this from. And we're gonna go ahead and pack all of that item into the first box. This uh, process will go ahead and continue on. And again, I apologize because I'm having an issue here, but this, this process will go ahead and continue on, at which point this would create the sales data entry record. But Matt, this is where your Starship will go ahead and pick up and we'll go ahead and uh, transfer over controls at this point. All right, thank you, Andrew. Get my uh, screen shared here for everyone. Um, so before I begin, uh, real quick, again, I know Adrian quickly discussed about V Technologies. A couple of things I wanted to mention. Um, we are a certified Sage solution as well as a gold developer partner with Sage. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is that because Starship is a UPS and FedEx certified shipping solution, um, both carriers have subsidy programs. Uh, and with through those subsidy programs, you can actually qualify for free funding that you can use to purchase Starship. Uh, so any questions on that, you know, you most certainly can reach out to your UPS and or FedEx rep. Okay. Um, so on my screen is the Starship shipping software. Uh, nice thing with Starship, we have a direct interface to Sage. So through this interface, my shipper can actually just ship, you know, right inside of Starship. Um, you know, they technically don't even need Sage open on their, their shipping or workstation. Um, again, they can just work right inside this Starship software. Um, up in the upper left-hand side is our source document. So as Andrew mentioned, you know, probably if you're using ScanCo, you probably have your pick sheet barcoded with that sales order number. So with Starship, you can use a regular wedge type scanner, hook that up to your workstation and actually scan in that sales order number. We also have a lookup number, or of course you can manually type in that sales order number. So what Starship is gonna do is just reach out and pull in the order header, as well as the line item detail information for the order that you just picked and packed um, through ScanCo. So on the shipment tab, um, what Starship is doing is we really just map to Sage fields. These mappings can have a one-to-many relationship field, um, relationship. So for example, here is a ship via field is how we're grabbing the carrier service and billing type account information um, for this shipment. Um, other nice thing is we could set up defaults for say, in this case, this was ship via was UPS ground. Um, but because it's international, um, I could set an international default service. So inside of Sage, I don't have to set up like uh, a ship via called UPS ground international or UPS standard to Canada. Uh, as you can see, again, it was UPS ground, Starship knows, oh, it's going to Canada. Let me use the default service, which is UPS standard to Canada. Um, most certainly as a shipper, I can click on this and make a change if I'd like to, just because it's automatically selected, doesn't mean I can't make changes. Um, sender, that's the, the company inside of Sage the order is coming from. Uh, Starship does support multiple companies as well as warehouses and locations. And the recipient, that is of course the ship to from the sales order. Uh, Starship will validate at uh, zip plus four for the address. And um, we actually do make the call to say UPS, FedEx, USPS to use what they consider is a valid address. So these can help save on those address correction fees. Um, down in the packaging view. So however I scan with using ScanCo on my handheld scanner, however I scan my items into a box, that's how Starship is going to pull in that information. Okay, so as you can see here, I got two items. We have two different boxes. Uh, with Starship, you can also set up and use custom packaging. Uh, so if you have 
standard size boxes, you know, a couple of boxes that you always use, you can mostly most certainly set those up inside Starship. So here, maybe I know this item goes into a medium box. I can select that. Nice thing with that, it will automatically populate the dimensions. So one less thing my shipper has to worry about stopping and filling out. Okay. Also on the item detail, Starship will start storing all your inventory items from Sage. Uh, its own database for that. So nice thing with that, you know, if we're doing LTL and we need freight information, or again for international, you can use Starship's database to store that information. I know normally inside Sage, it's not standard fields. Uh, most certainly if you have user-defined fields set up inside of Sage, we can change those mappings and have Starship automatically pull data from user-defined fields. Uh, but if not, again, you can just use Starship's database. So here, you know, if I need the Schedule B or Harmonize code, I can quickly look it up. You know, I can look up by code or by description to get that information, country of manufacturer, EEI classification, uh, cert of origin. Okay. So all that required international information can be stored right here inside of Starship. All right. Um, if you have a weight, uh, scales for weights, uh, we integrate with most scales. So if you have one hooked up to your workstation, you know, Starship can automatically pull in that weight. Um, I can also, you know, use Sage weights in my demo system. I'm just using weights that are set up inside of Sage. So we can automate that, pulling that data. Um, so really, again, with ScanCo, I'm going to be scanning my sales order number, bringing in however I scan that information on my handheld device. And next step maybe would be rate shopping. So from Starship, I can click this green dollar icon to rate shop, or we can click the F5 key, which is a shortcut key. Uh, this rate shopping feature, we also, as a standard feature with Starship, put this inside of sales order entry. Uh, so actually, I can rate shop at time, time of order. So my customer service reps can actually rate. When Starship makes the rating, uh, we make the call directly to your carriers. So we are going to return your live negotiated contract rates that you have with the carrier, okay? Um, we can also return published list right, uh, rates as well. But here, as you can see, and you can see all my UPS, my different service types for both UPS and FedEx. I'm gonna be able to see estimated delivery. I can also do by business days or total days. And again, I can do contract or list rates. Um, inside Starship, you can also set up ship via rules. So maybe you want Starship to kind of go through this data automatically and select the carrier and or service based on your own you know, criteria. Great shop. On the charges tab, you know, shippers don't have to click this tab. I just like to show it. This is really a breakdown of the charges. Uh, but one thing I like to show here is a freight rule. So with, with Starship, you can set up freight rules. They can be percentages, min maxes, flat rates. Um, it can be based off a customer or even uh, here I'm using just a user defined field that I've set up inside customer maintenance. Um, it's just called freight discount. It's a checkbox. So because this is selected, uh, this customer is receiving a 10% discount on freight. Okay. These rules can go again, you know, if you want to do a promo code, it could be by order total. Um, it could go all the way down to line item detail. So I could say, Hey, anytime item one, two, three, four is on an order, add $20 because it's an oversized item. All right. Um, so after I rate, when I'm ready to ship and process, I can then click this uh, icon up top here. And what that's going to do is make the call, you know, let the carrier know I have a package. Uh, it's going to return my tracking number from the carrier, in this case, UPS. And of course, I then as a shipper will get my shipping documents. Uh, for the sake of the demo, I just have them previewing. I'm also using what we call our smart label. Uh, so as you can see here, the smart label will print the shipping label and the packaging list together on an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. So this would go to a laser printer. Uh, you know, most certainly you can still send the shipping label to a thermal printer. If you'd like, you can also send the packaging list to a thermal printer as well. Okay. Um, or we have clients that they'll do shipping label to a thermal printer, packing list still to a laser printer. Okay. So you can mix and match or, you know, send them both to a thermal printer. After that, because this is an international, we'll get our second box here and then we'll get all our international documents. So Starship, you know, this we print all international documents. If this was an LTL order, we do bill of lading, you know, packaging labels. Um, so here's our commercial invoice. And again, because we're pulling that order header line item detail, 
That's all that information is going to be populated on my documents. Um, our documents can be customized. And so you know, here I put a, a logo, but uh, maybe I wanted, um, you know, customer ABC needs the commercial invoice to look a certain way. Uh, you can most certainly set up a template for that customer and then also assign that template a printing rule. So that document will only print when the order is for customer ABC. Um, some other, you know, some of our clients will actually take a document, have it pre-signed, dated, you know, the company, the title. Again, just things that you can do to, you know, save time. Now my shipper doesn't have to stop and sign this and fill out these standard fields down below. Okay. In any of these documents, you can turn on, turn off. You know, here I have the shipper's letter of instructions. You know, you might not need that, so you don't have to print that. Right. So again, for my shipper, they can rate shop, ship and process. For them, it's rinse, repeat cycle. You know, it's on to our next order. Um, for the front office, we'll just jump into uh, invoice data entry here. And we'll bring up our invoice for the shipment and for the sales order 41818. So I'll go to my last invoice here. Okay, 41818. On the header tab, if I click on Sage's tracking button here, you're going to see we are going to write back the package breakdown, the tracking numbers. Okay. Um, this does write inside a Sage's tracking table, so this will flow through into history. So I can see this at you know later date. I can go through customer maintenance or invoice history lookup. I can also use Sage's buttons here. This is to track. Um, you know maybe a customer calls. I want to say oh yep you know box one. You should see item six six five five. So I can even see item to box detail. And then, of course, on the uh, yeah, some lag with my mouse here on the totals tab, we are going to write back the freight amount. Um, we can do applied amount. So applied is plus or minus any freight rules. Uh, freight rules can be on top of your list rates or your actual contract rates. Okay. You could also set up rules to not write back freight. You know, maybe certain customers always get free freight. You know, we can set up a rule that says, hey, don't ever write back freight. Another nice thing with, with Starship, and again, you know, with these mapping fields, I can also map other data inside and pass to Sage. So here, I down below here, I created another user-defined field. As you see, freight costs from Starship. And what this is doing is always passing what the carrier is going to charge me for this shipment. Okay. So, you know, when someone's going through this, we can take a look, and before they update these invoices, they can look and say, "Oh, wait a minute! You know, we charge 41.23, but we're going to be charged 45.81. Oh, this customer received a discount. No, nope, they shouldn't have. You know, it should be $50." So, someone, you know, kind of last check, and most certainly, if we notice a difference, we can make the change to that freight amount field. All right, and then real quick, two other features included with Starship is our e-notification program. Uh, so log back in here. Uh, with eNotify, you can create your own custom templates. Uh, if you're currently kind of using UPS or FedEx, their emails, you know, they're usually branded UPS, FedEx. Nice thing with our email program, you know, I can put my company logo, build my brand awareness. Uh, templates are very easy to design. You know, let my customer know, hey, your shipment's on its way. I can pull in Sage fields, PO, sales order number, let them know how it was being shipped. And again, that package breakdown, I can show them item to box detail, tracking numbers are hyperlinked. Uh, so these help reduce those inbound calls of customers just calling up, you know, looking for their shipment. Um, with these templates, you can also do emailing rules. Uh, so, you know, maybe if you have, say, gold or platinum customers set up, uh, you want to just send them a coupon code for 20% off your next order. You can, one, hyperlink that coupon code, but also do a emailing rule that, you know, hey, only send this 20% off promo code to my platinum or gold customers. Okay, email addresses we can pull from Sage, no problem there. You know, we can also pull from user-defined fields if you need it to go to say seven different people. Um, we can you know set up user-defined fields and pull from there. And then also is our this is our dashboard program. Uh, nice thing with dashboard, it can be installed in as many workstations as you like. Does not require any additional seats or licenses. And as you can see, it's really a nice reporting tool. So I have some performance indicators up here. And I can see shipments by status, by carrier, shipment by user. So with Starship, each of your shippers can have their own login, their own rules, security features, so on and so forth. And we have some canned reports. 
Uh, late delivery report, this is one a lot of clients will run. This actually goes out, compares guaranteed delivery dates to the actual delivery date, gonna let you know of any shipment that wasn't delivered on time. And then we also have a can charge comparison report. So I was kind of talking about doing this inside a Sage, but this again is just gonna show you all your shipments, show you the, your applied, so that's what you charge the customer for ship, your shipment, and then compare it to your contract rate. And the third column is the plus or minus. Uh, that way you can make sure you're uh, not losing money on your shipments. And with that, that's really what I wanted to show everyone. So I'll pass it over to Patty um, so she can show you how to capture your funds. Thank you, Matt. Great presentation from everybody, very informative. And as I'm getting my screen ready, I just wanna mention how with the solutions that are being presented today, you not only get automation through Certico, of course, with their inventory cycle count, you also get visibility, accuracy, and compliance through Scanco as well as Starship. With Scanco, they are actually making mobility happen now. And if you haven't uh, reached, reached out to the folks with Scanco to find out more about the mobility solution, you should. And then with Starship, I can only tell you the speediest and least expensive shipping will be available to you with their shop rates as well as the, the porting capabilities and the level of information that Starship is, is offering. So this all adds up to superb customer service, which is what we're all headed for and striving for. As, now, where does credit card processing come in? Everybody wants to get paid. So what we're going to do for you is help you get paid faster using click to pay so what I did while everybody was presenting, I actually created a quick sales order. And click to pay is, click to pay will be available to you um, simply by turning on paperless office. And let me just bring up a, a quick transaction here. Actually, I'm gonna start another one. And before I start it, let me just walk you through a quick overview of how easy it is to set up the paperless office functionality within Sage 100. So, it's as simple as going through your library master company maintenance, and you can see that APS click to pay can be enabled. APS click to pay is available as of version 2013. And all you need to do is turn on, of course, paperless office, and then you can set the required criteria right from the library master company maintenance. You can see that you can allow the default customer option to be opt out by customer or opt in by customer, it's entirely up to you. We also set up level three here, and I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about level three in just a few seconds. Uh, before I go into exactly how click to pay works, let's, let me just show you briefly in customer maintenance what it will look like if you do decide to, for example, opt a customer out. Nothing really changes, standard Sage functionality. The difference is, of course, we have paperless office turned on, and click to pay opt out option is available to you. Now I created a sales order in invoice data entry, sales order invoice data entry. So let's just assume that this is the sales order that, for example, we had just completed through um, Starship. So you're ready to ship the items. You have the shipping fee already included. And this customer in particular is on terms. If this customer is on terms, you're able to create the invoice and send it out automatically. You won't have to worry about it, and this is how simple it is. I'm gonna go ahead and print my invoice. Now, the invoice itself, as you know, is a crystal form, so you can definitely customize it at your convenience. And you can see that you can choose the paperless office electronic format, and then just continue to print. Now, this is standard, of course, Sage functionality. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, continue with this process. You'll see that I'm gonna be delivering one or two invoices. I had already started one a little bit before. And actually, that invoice is already sent. So I'm gonna jump right into the email where your customer would receive the invoice. Jumping into a quick Gmail account. And you can see there are several invoices that are pending. This is the customer's view now. If you click on the invoice, this is where click to pay comes into play. They will see a pay here button. So you're going to allow your customer to actually submit their payments right then and there. 
without you having to lift a finger. You actually went through your standard stage end of day process, you printed your invoices, and now your customer is able to choose the invoice and make a payment. Now notice the level of information that we're providing, not just the company information, we also show the invoice number, the amount of the transaction, and then we allow them to make a payment. They have the option to pay for the full balance of the invoice or a custom amount. If they decide to process um, the full amount, now they will have the option to enter a credit card number. They could also use ACH, and they have the option to save a payment method or use a previously saved payment method. Now let's just assume they're entering a brand new credit card. Very simple. You will be asked for the typical information that you're asked for when you key in your credit card information, and then you're able to submit. Once the transaction is submitted, you'll see they will get a transaction ID. All of this is being updated into Sage Accounts Receivable Cash Receipts as the customer is processing. They will also get notification that the payment has been processed. And then as far as what's happening in the background, let me just show you where that transaction ID came from. It came from the APS Pays portal, and it will also appear in as I said, Sage 100 accounts receivable cash receipts. So the reason I'd like to show you what the transaction looks like in the portal is because of level three processing. If anybody is not familiar with level three processing, let me just tell you that you're missing out on an immense amount of saving. Level three processing will is basically a program put in place by Visa and MasterCard that will allow you to cut your rates in half, sometimes even more than half, or less than half, I should say lower than half. <laughs> um, anyone that is curious about this, the fields that are in our portal, which are in the transaction ID, are the fields that Visa and MasterCard require in order to lower your rates in half. All of these fields are sent to Visa and MasterCard on your behalf every time you process a transaction, even if the transaction is being processed through click to pay. Now, if, for example, um, the transaction was completed, the fields were sent, when you receive your statement at the end of the month, you will see a savings, a considerable savings. And you can see this is the average savings. Now, typically it's 43%. This was actually a little less. 16000 almost $17,000 a year for this particular merchant. Now, if anybody is interested in purchasing any of the enhancements that were presented today, Take a look at the savings we can get you by simply analyzing or auditing your current merchant rates and fees. Take the opportunity to allow us to review them for you, and we will be happy to come back with a savings that will help you offset the cost of the enhancements that you've seen today. Um, getting back to click to pay briefly, here's the invoice that we were working on. Let me just there was a couple of invoices that I was working on before the presentation, which is why that message came up a little while ago. But my transaction has been completed. If I go into, we offer customer viewer, for example, where you could see each of the transactions that have been processed. And in this customer viewer, you're also able to see anything that was sent out by paperless office, for example. So you'll be able to keep track of the invoices that have been sent out and that have been paid by via click to pay. Also, in accounts receivable invoice data entry, I'm sorry, uh, accounts receivable cash receipts, you'll be able to also see any payments that were received via click to pay by simply clicking on this button. Once you click on that button, and I'm not sure if the update is complete here yet, but uh, once you click on that button, you will be able to see, yeah, my update's not complete, a list of specific invoices that were paid from your customers you'll be able to take note of the payments that you received. And since we allow you to batch out, uh, or we can automatically set you up to auto batch each night, you will have the funds available in your bank account within 11 to 12 hours. Ladies and gentlemen, if, if someone has not been paying attention to the presentation, this is the moment to pay attention for two minutes. Again, come back, provide us with your current statements, and we will find the savings for you. You have to be curious about how much money you can potentially save by simply allowing us to provide you with this analysis. 
In addition to that, keep in mind that we do not charge for installation, implementation, training, maintenance, or support. Level three processing is available completely automated. You don't have to worry about keying in the fields that are listed on the screen right now, which are the fields that are required in order to qualify for level three rates. Now, in addition to that, we also provide the 12 hour funding, free PCI support, 24 seven live support, very transparent merchant statements with guaranteed rates. And if you're processing with Sage Payments, we offer a migration utility, so you don't have to reach me in any of your existing credit card information. Again, ladies and gentlemen, keep in mind, at this presentation, you not only learned how to get paid faster, but also how to automate your process, how to maintain the visibility that you require in order to keep your customers happy, and how to also continue to receive accurate numbers regarding your inventory and, of course, compliance. With that, I'm going to go ahead and hand it back over to you, Adrian. Perfect, Anne. You should all be able to see uh, the contact information here. We did record this presentation, and I will be sending out a follow-up email with the recording and all the contact information of the prisoners. And we just really appreciate you, uh, again, spending time with us today. We know it's hard to come by, and we hope to see you on a future webinar. Thank you all. Take care. Bye-bye.